Social media platforms can be confusing and often overwhelming places, especially for us pet parents. Our attention spans are decreasing and the platforms are pushing shorter and shorter forms of content. For a creator, especially in the healthy pet space, it can be difficult to get across a full thought in 60 seconds, but we have to in order to get seen. So what do you do as a pet parent? How are you supposed to consume this type of content and actually learn something to help your pet? I have this same question. So Gwen Campbell, COO for Dr. Judy Morgan's Naturally Healthy Pets, joins me to discuss how to best consume short form content as a pet parent, finding trusted resources on social media, and what it's like to work with Dr. Judy, AKA her mom. You don't wanna miss one second of today's episode because first of all, Gwen is just an amazing person and she has a beautiful and expansive personality. I also get to know her just a little bit better. So make sure to stick around to the end so you can get to know her a little bit better too. Without any further ado, here's Gwen. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. So Gwen, you are known very well online as Dr. Judy's daughter. And I don't know if that's exactly how you want to be known, but <laughs> <laughs> for now, um, for now. Yeah. I think, um, I think I am getting a few fans too, which is crazy for me. Cause I'm so, uh, not like that. I'm an engineer by degree. So not my personality or cup of tea, but it's, I find it funny and I'll tease her about it sometimes too. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, you have such a big personality and it definitely comes through in the content that you help put out for, for her. Um, and that's what I really wanted to talk to you about today is I, I just heard this this morning and I've heard it before, but it like stuck with me this morning. And I was like, uh, because I, I, it's my like guilty pleasure that I listen to like political podcasts. (laughs) So they were he was talking about, you know, the, the, how social media is both good and bad. And um, the really good part is also the really bad part. And he, he called it the uh, democratization of the exchange of information in our society. And it's true. Like, that is both the really, really good part and the really, really bad part. Because na- the smaller creators can have a voice, but not all small creators are smart. <laughs> right? Or and people, so you like, know, people that have big marketing budgets when they catch on to the right thing and they put enough money behind it can have a really big impact, whether that's for better yeah. or for worse. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of been like how marketing has been before social media is that you had to have a ton of money to put behind something. And now an everyday person can have their voice, which again is both good and bad. But you're really, really like killing it with the short form <laughs> content. And no, I really believe like truly you are. And um, I, I, I've like every day I open up TikTok and I'm like, go viral, go viral, because there are some <laughs> other, there are some other, not for me, for y'all, for, because I'm like, there are some other people in the pet space that are consistently viral. And I don't always love their message. And I'm like, please stop. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, I, I really wanted to kind of break it down with you, not necessarily in how you create the content, although there are very complicated topics that you do break down into short form content. And that's like how, how, <laughs> but more like how pet parents can take this short form content. Like what is your intent when you put this short form content out there? Because you can't really get, you know, a really complicated topic 
discussed in 60 seconds, right. but you can put an idea in somebody's mind. So like, what is the intent you have when you're putting this content together and how pet parents can take it and, and kind of internalize it and where should they go from there? Yeah, that's a good question. And we just had this discussion actually with, um, we got this opportunity through Jack Canfield actually to have a marketing coach um, for very cheap. It was a, the deal of the century. And so we were talking yesterday with him about different marketing techniques. And he was saying how he actually despises this short form content, like the reels and the TikTok, because he says, you know, it, it's hard to go against the older marketing strategy, which is like the infomercial where it's the longer sell and you have to draw people in and hook them and then tease them with an offer and then give them a guarantee. And then you tease them with the offer versus TikTok is like you get four seconds to hook someone. And if you don't hook them, they are going to swipe. You know, that's a very different way of catching people's attention. Um, and I think what we have learned from the from the business side is that each platform. So we're on TikTok, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. Um, and we have two website platforms as well. So we have to create content that those platforms prefer or promote out because a photo on Instagram, I'm sure everybody noticed, um, when Reels came out, photos became a lot less viewed in your timeline. It became a lot of Reels. So on Instagram, Reels will get pushed out by the algorithm and can catch a lot of attention versus pictures. It might be a little bit more challenging. Uh, on Facebook, we have the opposite experience where reels are more challenging. Facebook doesn't really push them out. Sometimes they completely glitch and don't show up, you know, all these things. Uh, but a post of a picture with a picture on Facebook does extremely well. We'll have, you know, a thousand shares or something on it. So we have learned that you really have to play the game with the platforms, um, which is exhausting. I think I complain about it on a daily basis, how annoying it is to try to cater to the algorithm that no one knows exactly how it works. We're all taking guesses and driving ourselves crazy over it. Um, but as far as what a pet parent can do with that is all of the platforms have the ability to save certain videos or posts. So that for me, I remember when I was pregnant, um, I started saving baby tips and parenting hacks and things like that when I was pregnant in a private album on my Instagram. So that way I was like, oh, when I am breastfeeding or whatever, I can go back and reference this. So the saving feature is really nice where you can save it and come back to it later. And whether or not it's a question you want to ask your veterinarian directly or it's something that you want to look into further yourself. Either way, you don't have to just rely on those four seconds to be something that makes you change your behavior. It's more like, okay, that four seconds to one minute for a post is just meant to catch your attention or give you a short piece of information. And with us especially, almost always that leads you into a source to get more information if you're interested. Um, so our goal really is upfront to either catch your attention if you're who we're speaking to, um, or let you know that, hey, this post or video doesn't resonate with me, or it's about cats and I don't even have a cat, whatever it is. So the first, yeah, 10 seconds is the most important when it comes to videos on everything. So as a pet parent, knowing, like going into consuming content, we really need to understand that whatever content we consume in this short form, <laughs> um, especially these short form videos, is really there just to catch our attention and to get us to do something else. Whether that is to learn more or, or whatever it may be, like to, to click the link, right. <laughs> basically. <clears throat> it's not like, well, I saw this video and now I'm changing everything I'm doing because of 60 right. seconds in my life. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's important. Um, you know, and sometimes people will put up uh, like treat recipes are a great example where they can actually get through a quick treat recipe in 60 seconds. It's like two or three ingredients. You're like, oh, okay, I know that I can reference this later if I want to make this treat. 
but for more complex topics, there's no possible way you can cover that material in a minute, or even if you try to do a series, uh, it's just not possible. So most of the time, my suggestion is to actually read the caption, number one, because that's really important. And I did a test to see if people actually read the caption, and it's very hit or miss based on my experience. Um, and if there is a link or a resource mentioned, like a link in bio or something like that, at least save it or open it in your browser so you're reminded later. So that way you understand the context of what piqued your interest uh, and not just relying on, yeah, that like 60 second video clip to completely change the way you're, you're doing things. Yeah. I, I have noticed that as well, that people are like, they totally miss the content. Like if, if they see your video, uh, one of your videos and don't follow you and they're just totally lost, right? They're just like, how can you put this information out there with no additional context? It's like, well, go to my page and you'll mm -hmm. see all the additional context <laughs> Yeah, in this. Um, and on social media, yeah, so it definitely does get very polarizing quickly. And I, I did this test out of pure curiosity the other day we posted a video of one of the kittens panting in the heat after he was playing really hard and um in the middle of the screen was text that said my cat is panting is this normal question mark and our handle is dr judy morgan if you click on the page it's dr judy morgan like i'm a holistic veterinarian pretty obvious if you go on our timeline there's tons of things that make it obvious she's a veterinarian and people were just commenting on the real being like, no, this isn't normal. Or yes, this is normal. Like answering the question, but not reading the caption that tells them, okay, it's normal in these scenarios. It's not normal in these scenarios. And I'm a veterinarian, you know, giving you this extra information, but people weren't even reading the caption. They were just commenting on it as if that the video content was the only piece that they needed to consume. Um, so yeah, it's very, if you're relying on a caption to relay your material, the crucial material, then it's going to be hit or miss, unfortunately. <laughs> I saw that video and I have to say, I was also confused. Like I saw it and I was like, wait, that, it, it started over again and there wasn't any additional information. And I was like, that's not like her. So <laughs> I read the caption and I was like, okay, I get it. But I did, it did stand out to me as being different. Yeah. So it's interesting that you say you were like interest, like you intentionally set up this test. <laughs> well, and so I did another one, which was really short because I wanted to use a specific audio. I think it only gave me like 10 seconds, like something that you just can't do much. And so I think I just put in there, like read the caption and I found that that is, that relays it better, I think, than just banking on people reading the captions. So it was an eye-opening little test where we know, like, if the caption has important context to it, we have to either reference it at a bare minimum or um, just make the video content as clear as possible. Because that was a really eye-opening test to see people just commenting and not reading the context and, and not knowing anything about the page. Yeah, I, that, that is interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Cause I was like, that's really strange. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's kind of for people like me who are like, I, I love following your content. I have noticed there is, I mean, uh, Okay, obviously it has to be a little odd that your mother and daughter are working together. <laughs> There's going to be some tension in there somewhere. Um, and one of the things that I've, I've noticed that, especially because you did a reel about it, is like unintentionally causing the internet to melt, melt down <laughs> over these really like these topics that really do go against the norm of what most pet parents know to be, you know, what, what they normally do just because this is what has been done for decades and decades and decades. Um, 
So what, how do you, how do you push forward with going, you know, moving forward with these ideas that you know are going to cause backlash that people are just going to be like, wait, you just blew my mind. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. I, I think for us, um, we take our best guess and take a number of steps of checks and balances of like asking each other if this is a good idea do we want to talk about this topic we are now planning out a lot of content ahead of time or at least themes so that way we're all on the same page with what we're going to talk about as a team um and so we do take a number of steps to try to make sure that it is something that's going to resonate with people it's going to relay information catch people's attention whatever um but yeah sometimes things blow up or go viral and we're just confused because we had no idea that this would be so mind-blowing and like dog vasectomies on tiktok i think that video has like thirty thousand likes or something like it just went crazier and we don't have a big tiktok following like we just kind of repost things on there to do the bare minimum um so that was completely unexpected and sometimes we'll post something and people will comment and say you know this this hurt my feelings or whatever it is and we'll be like okay we did not mean it that way like we'll take it down and we'll restate this in a different way that's um you know not gonna trigger anything that we don't want so yeah i think for us we we try to take all the steps to be informed and to do our best but there are times where we get it wrong and we will say okay our bad like we didn't realize this would be taken this way um and take it down or do something different wow yeah i don't know that i would expect you to take anything down but that's interesting it's, that you... it's very rare i can only think of maybe like two or three um, in like this year, probably, um, yeah. most of them, people just weren't ready. Yeah. Most of them, um, that have blown up recently were just controversial topics and it wasn't anything that, you know, we all agreed, Hey, this was, you know, stated well, we covered our bases as best we could in a social media post you know we kind of discuss like have we checked these boxes if the answer is yes and people are upset about it then for the most part I try to just either uh, engage politely or just say like hey talk to your vet and do it you know some generic thing about doing what's best for you or yeah. making your own choices so yeah it's very rare but when we do miss the mark um, I have at least I don't know if Judy has, but, um, yeah, I will take things down if, if I post something and people take it the wrong way. It's, I can only think of like two instances in the past few months. Yeah. <laughs> so to kind of piggyback off of what you were just saying with, um, you know, if somebody is upset or they don't understand and, and your, your reply is just, you know, empathetic, like, I get it. Talk with your veterinarian. How, how can just an average everyday pet parent go on social media and what kind of tips do you have for them for curating their content on social media to find their trusted sources? I mean, obviously for me, Dr. Judy is at the top of the list, but you know, we, we, the reality is we do get information from lots of different places and curate curating a feed in our, you know, whatever it may be, Instagram or Facebook or wherever, what kind of tips do you have for people to, to find those trusted resources? And, and how do you kind of, as a content creator, you probably have, like you were just saying, you have things that you check off of your list to make sure you're putting good content out there. So what are you expecting to get from creators as a pet parent. Yeah. And I will say that, um, for the record, I'm speaking from my personality and my position where I am definitely more empathetic and soft and like, Oh, I don't want to hurt people's feelings. (laughs) Judy, who is my mother. Yeah. She's like a tell it like it is like, if this hurts your feelings, like get over it. You know, she's definitely, a go-getter, a very strong-willed woman. So we definitely complement each other. And that 
I think is actually a bonus because we kind of resonate with different groups of people because there are some people that um, are like, okay, you know, you, at some point you have to pick something and you got to have a strong opinion on it. I'm like, okay, I get that. But there are a lot of people that kind of want to meet us in the middle. And to me, I think they're worth, you know, investing some time into. And I get that people just have different ways of thinking about those things. Um, but yeah, I think that that helps that the two of us, a soft and firm, definitely complements each other. <laughs> Um, as far as curating your own content, the explore features on a lot of these are actually really powerful. And that's what I use too for our business to actually reach out to other brands and other, I guess, influencers. Um, and we've made a lot of connections through social media, actually, that turned into real life collaborations. So I would say using your explore feature, using hashtags is really powerful as well. So like hashtag raw feeding, if you're into that, hashtag, um, you know, fresh food for dogs or something along those lines that you're interested in, you'll get a lot of cool results and you can just start scrolling through. Once you start showing interest in a certain hashtag, genre, brand, the algorithm is actually going to start pushing that to your explore page and you'll see it change over time as you interact with different pages and different themes or different hashtags. So I use that a lot. There's some big hashtags, like the holistic vet hashtag is a good one on social media. And so to me, that starts to bring to your attention these different pages, these different views, these different topics. And I would at first just try to follow a couple that pique your interest and resonate with you. And if long term, after you follow those accounts, they're not providing you with the information that you agree with or you don't like it for some reason, then go out and find new, interesting, exciting people. Um, or a page like us say, you know, Dr. Judy and I aren't your cup of tea, but you saw that Dr. Connor Brady was on our show and you really love what he presents. Um, then hop on over to his pages and follow him, you know, so you can, you can curate your own content pretty easily on, on most of the pages, at least if you use the explore or whatever the discover features. I, I very much appreciate Dr. Judy, because I feel like I, I want to be like her one day. <laughs> <laughs> she is a fierce woman, let me tell you. And she is like born this way. Like this is just how she is. Um, and so, yeah, there's so many people where that really resonates with them where they're like, she tells it like it is like, I want to be like that, especially our UK and Irish, like more European followers. They're like, oh yes, finally, like someone in America that's telling things the way that they should be told. And I'm over here like having anxiety, like, okay, let's kumbaya <laughs> everyone. Um, so it's funny and we make fun of it, but it is actually really complimentary and beneficial for everyone because it gives you a little, a little variety, a little taste of a couple different viewpoints. Yeah, I, I, I know. Well, I don't know if, if you know, my husband and I worked together and it was challenging at first because we are very different personalities. Um, but he definitely helps me and like, I'll just, I'll be talking about something, especially if I'm talking to someone and he's listening and he's like, nobody knows what you're talking. You need to explain what a titer <sighs> test is. You need to explain, like, I just, uh, like, I just start rambling on about all these things. And he's like, nobody knows what you're talking about. <laughs> so he kind of brings me down to like, you need to talk to the average person. <laughs> right. And I mean, it is it, joking aside. It really is helpful to have someone like that, that can be a checks and balances thing. And especially with Judy and her having a strong personality, it's it's pretty rare for me to like put my foot down on something. Most of the time, if she says she wants to do something, I'm like, I just respect it and figure out how to make it work for everyone. Um, but when I do, I'm like, okay, Judy, like this is the one time I am standing up to you. Like I don't want to do this. And usually she'll be like, okay, fine. Like we'll do something different. But uh, for the most part, it is it is just a nice way to double check each other and improve the way the overall business runs because we have each other to rely on. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I know I've seen a big change in the past couple of years in, in the content coming out. And it is it is nice to get to see both of your personalities <laughs> come through. 
Um, it is. It has turned and, into quite the dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I, I, I do want to just interject for everyone listening that I personally appreciate when somebody that I know and trust online shares an idea that is controversial that I am not familiar with or that makes me go like I'm kind of taken aback and I'm like, wait, I need to look more into this because I don't having been researching with pets for many, many years at this point, I have come to the realization that I don't know, (laughs) like I will never know everything for sure. And there are so many more people that know so much more than I do always that I I can be open-minded and say that shook me, but okay, I need to learn more about this. And maybe at the end, I'll agree with you. And maybe at the end, I won't agree with you, but it gives me more, a a better knowledge base and opportunity to do my own research. And I kind of hope, I know with the content I put out, that's what I hope people do is they're like, oh my gosh, you just said something that shook me. And now I need to figure out what the heck it is you're talking about. Um, because I want people to go out there and figure it out and, and learn more and do better because that's, I think the only way we can do better yeah. <laughs> is by learning more. Absolutely. And that even we do this for the business. We are constantly trying to collaborate with other people in the natural and holistic pet care space because you can't be a specialist in everything. It's impossible. And so, you know, my mom's main focus is nutrition, more dog nutrition, but we're forcing her to get into her cat nutrition side as well. Now that she has 13 cats. Um, (laughs) and so she, you know, that's her main specialty. And then she also loves diagnostics and, and diagnostic testing. She's really passionate about that. So, you know, those are the two areas where she really focuses. And of course she has a lot of knowledge on other things, but when it comes to like training is a great example. She's like, I don't train my animals. I don't know how to do it. Uh, Like it's not my thing. And so we can collaborate with a trainer. Um, And we've had actually trainers on that have said uh, not, not, I wouldn't say they said conflicting things, but they just had different approaches, different ways of doing things. And so for us, we looked at that and said, okay, I could see how, you know, this approach might work with some and this approach might work with others. Like it's good to present all of that to people through content because they can that can get them thinking okay which makes sense to me or do I want to go and look for a trainer near me to come in person you know it just gets you thinking about what you want to do with your own pet so I think that's definitely really good advice yeah I and I appreciate that um it's one of the things I'm trying to do more is it kind of throw a little devil's advocate into some interviews here (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but um, I think it depends uh, depends on your uh, interviewee's personality. But for me, I definitely uh-huh. appreciate that. And that is something that we have incorporated into the business too. If, th- Of course, if there's something that we totally don't agree with, we don't want to even like go down that road. That's one thing. But for the most part, we really like collaborating with people that have knowledge bases that are different from ours or opinions that have that are slightly different. So, um, yeah, I, I would definitely love to see some of these interviews. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but yeah, I, I've been very fortunate lately to have, have interviewed a lot of awesome people, including yourself. <laughs> and I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, and I was going to ask you what it's like working with Dr. Judy, but you've kind of talked about it so much already. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> to um uh expand upon it but it sounds like you have a pretty good pretty good thing going yeah I would say you know it's a little chaotic um and we definitely do how should I say I don't know we just all appreciate that she is the founder she is the reason why this company this brand exists and we all know that yes we are building her brand, but this is also her area of expertise. So I think just respecting that is number one. 
but for sure with with Judy it's never dull and she said the other day I will never forget this moment we were talking about different numbers of of how many followers we had on each platform and how much money we had made and whatever just reflecting on the year so far and she was like man we're hitting our goals she's like that stresses me out because that means I'm gonna have to set higher goals and I was like (laughs) <laughs> or we could just celebrate that we're meeting the goals that you set. And she was like, oh, that de- uh, are you sure? I'm like, yes, I am 100% sure that that's how goal setting works. She's like, I think it just means that I didn't <laughs> set the bar high enough. It's like, okay. So, yeah, it's good. To- I totally <laughs> <laughs> she's and she that's genuinely her like that's you just have to accept that you know this is how her mind really works because genuinely for my entire life if I would come home with an A on a paper or something it was just kind of expected she was like of course you got an A you're smart you know you applied yourself of course you got an A and uh the words good job whenever she says them i always like stop if anybody's near me i'm like everyone pause judy just said good job okay let us sink in all right let's continue <laughs> <laughs> i got to get i got to get my little my little digs in every once in a while but uh yeah she but she's she's a hard worker she's a super hard worker she is an expert in her field um and she is extremely tenacious so you got to respect it for sure yeah have you ever thought about going to veterinary school or you think you are in veterinary school working for (laughs) oh geez yeah so the thought has crossed my mind I actually before I came on board with her company I actually was the first employee hired at a tech startup company here in Raleigh And so I have a small piece of ownership from that company, which is looking to get acquired actually relatively soon. So I said, if I get that influx of cash from my first company and I can afford without stressing to go to vet school, that I will strongly consider going to vet school because there is one right here. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. But I, I, don't I, go I in often debt wonder what's going to what happen. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally get that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to have a student loan debt at the age of thirty. So here we are. You're only. You're, oh my goodness gracious. Okay. So, gosh, you're making me feel so old. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no, it's okay. Um. Uh, but no, I really appreciate your time and you coming on. I just have one more. Sure. Um, I don't even know if this is a question, but like I did, a, I don't know if you've seen Hot Ones, but I've di- I did a deep dive on your Instagram. Hot Ones. <laughs> it's a thing they do. Um, so it's an interview show on YouTube where you eat hot wings as well, the, the host and the interviewee, they both eat hot wings that are get, getting progressively hotter and it's it's a huge show. Okay, anyway, I'm glad that's not um, a challenge because I cannot eat spicy food. No. I would just be crying hysterically <laughs> and snot would be pouring out. So I'm glad that's not it. No, I couldn't either. I did the um, one chip challenge and it was horrendous. Yikes. Like, horrendous. <laughs> we'll never do that again. No, I um, can like sometimes chipotle, ch- like chipotle mayo is too spicy for me. I I can't. Same. Like my husband, if he uses pepper, he has to use white pepper so I can't see yeah. it. <laughs> That's me. I did my ancestry DNA. It's like you're like 99% like just white from like the UK. And like that makes so much sense because like Same. ketchup is my threshold for spice. Uh, that's it for me. So. Yeah, no, they, <laughs> um, so anyway, they, he, he has sometimes does this segment of where he does a deep dive on your Instagram. But, um, so I decided to look through your Instagram and I saw that you are a country music fan yeah. and I did not know that about you. Um, and I saw where you went to Kenny Chesney, which is awesome. He's like one that I haven't seen. I'm so jealous. <laughs> so what is your favorite 
country music artist. Yeah. So my childhood best friend and I had a tradition from basically when we turned 18 until COVID hit that we would go to a Kenny Chesney concert in Philadelphia every summer. It was usually in June and Kenny Chesney concerts have the best tailgates. It's insane. Like people bring in dump truck loads of sand and tarps and water for like fake beaches. It's insane. It's so much fun. Um, And so before COVID hit, yeah, I would see Kenny Chesney live every year. And I think there was one year that he only went live in Boston. And so we drove up to Boston together to see him live. So, um, yeah, I would say I'm really into, you know, I'm getting divorced. So I'm really into the female country singers right now because they've got just the words they have right now. Um, I think probably Miranda Lambert overall is probably my favorite. And I saw her live as I, well. I, she was amazing. Like, I, I think I was like telepathically <laughs> telling you to say Miranda Lambert. <laughs> There we go. We're connected. Really love her. Yeah, we're on the same wavelength <laughs> now. We're good. I did. Yeah, she opened. She was one of the openings for Kenny Chesney one year. I saw her live. She was incredible. And I actually love her from the Pistol Annies too. I don't know if you listen to them. And then she went solo. Mm-hmm. So yeah, big Miranda Lambert fan for sure. Yeah, I've only seen her once, and I I definitely want to see her again. Um, it was a long time ago. A uh, free concert on the beach, a long, long time ago, free concert on the beach. Um, so, yeah, I definitely want to see her again. And now I know uh, <laughs> who to hit up. I'm jonesing for a Nashville trip. There you go. <laughs> yeah. If she's in Nashville, it's a short little hop for me. It'll be a great excuse. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Gwen. Tell me where people are. Tell me, tell the, our listeners where um, they can find you or Dr. Judy, which right now is also. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm also part cyber Dr. Judy. So following there is probably the best. So it's just at Dr. G Morgan on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram and TikTok on Twitter, we are integrated pets, but no one moderates it. So if you tweet us, no one sees it, unfortunately. We have to pick up Twitter at some I, point, I think. I don't know. I You know, when when Elon was going to buy it, I created a new account because I had like, I couldn't even remember how to log into my old account. And I'm like, with everything going on, I, I don't think I've even tweeted once. Yeah. <laughs> and I know that, you know, some of my friends, it's really, really big. And some tweets can go, I guess, viral. I don't know. But I just, yeah, we haven't tackled that, that, that platform, really. Yeah, I understand that. Well, um, you're killing it on Instagram and Facebook, and uh, we appreciate you. So thank you so much. Thanks, um, thanks. I don't, I'm sure you see all of the comments, but I know you're helping people and their pets, and that is what we're here for. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you as well. I think it's important that people in our community that have similar missions and messages can collaborate and help spread awareness because that's really powerful as well. It is. I, I, I do. I'm very big on um, people in the healthy pet space. We need to support each other because it would be way too easy for trolls to tear us apart if we didn't. Yeah. And just looking at the revenue numbers from, you know, the big pet food companies, it's like, gee, it's like billions of dollars, you know, and we're over here like counting pennies, you know, with sales. Yeah. So uh, it's definitely, it's going to take a a large community to make mass change, unfortunately, here. For sure. Well, I hope it, I I think it's headed in the right direction. Absolutely. Um, I I know, I just read the uh, psychology of totalitarianism. And as somebody in the pet space, I really took it in as like little, I say little, small um, uh, creators, like, well, you're a much bigger creator than I am, but um, small creators like us versus the big pet food and big pharma. And I just was like, it gave me so much hope. Absolutely. <laughs> when I read it. 
Absolutely. And I mean, it's <laughs> evident too, in um, we were talking yesterday about the growth of the platform Shopify, which is a small business e-commerce platform that you can set up yourself. You can create your own website. It makes it super easy to create your own online small business. And they came out a few years, well, you know, five years before COVID or something, but during COVID when people were at home and creating these side gigs or ways that they wanted to create extra revenue or kill time, uh, shop, Shopify has grown tremendously as a company. So that's super cool too, because a lot more diversity has entered into the pet space and we're getting different perspectives and people so far are really collaborating well uh, amongst each other and promoting each other, which is awesome. I love that Kumbaya stuff. That's like my cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> someone comes in and causes trouble we're gonna have a stroke <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my goodness well i appreciate you and i know so many pet parents out there also appreciate you so thank you so much um for being here for your time and for everything you do and with that if you have any parting words i'm gonna say i'll talk to you next week yeah yeah just let me know if you want to do something with uh the Judester, we could probably do something, especially if she can do it like this on her phone. Um, so just let me know. Awesome. Will do. Thank you so much, right, Gwen. Thank you. Today's episode is brought to you by the Furry Family Coach Dog Training. Train your dog in the comfort of your own home and on your schedule with video instruction from me. Learn the foundations of training, teach basic cues to your dog, and explore solutions to behavioral issues all inside of this video-based online training course. Go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to see you on the inside. Oh, oh.